out of our team. Three members of the team are here today, which is great. <laughs> yes. Nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you. John Chenzi was an integral part. He was brutal to the students, bashing to the key. Uh, uh, and Steve uh, Metzger, who was a Mushishi, was another key member of that team. It was so great to see Peter and Brett here, who were very much a big part of that team. And Steve, at that time, had just had a, some kind, I don't know how he had a road accident, scraped up his face, but around that time, he did a face punch. So he had a fearsome look about him. He had sort of a Charles Manson beard, and then he had this, you know, the face punch, scars on his face. And so he scared the other team. <laughs> and he was such a gentle soul. Steve was yeah. the kind of soul that you could imagine. Um, he was brilliant at cards. You probably know a lot more and say more words about Steve, but that's how I remember. Um, generous to a fault, kind, um, great laugh, great oh, smile. Uh, I reconnected it with him year or two before he died of cancer and uh, it was funny because we were talking about how he and myself and Brett had all gone back and become lawyers and uh, he, Shame. He, <laughs> <laughs> and that he had also gotten married and we prepared children he was much more productive than one well, he was a Catholic, eh? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was but he observed the, the, the Pope's... Uh, <laughs> Steve. I would like to briefly add something about Steve. I mean, uh, uh, Steve was in my year and uh, we went to orientation together in Ottawa. And I didn't see him very much in Nigeria, uh, just a couple of times. And I remember coming back and uh, arriving up at the White Elephant Mirabelle in the middle of nowhere <laughs> on my way home. And who was waiting for me at the gate? I don't know how he found that I was coming. He was there, and he was there to transport me to Dorval so I could get home to Ottawa. And, uh, you know, Steve, uh, you know, Wonderful heart, uh, very generous person, and uh, um, I miss him. <laughs> oh, I do. And I see him a lot. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, Paul and I traveled with Steve across the desert, and uh, <laughs> we went through a trip from hell. <laughs> and he, we asked him to go along with us so that we had a male escort, and he protected us from some incredible things. <laughs> <laughs> and honest to Pete, I. I really have to say he was a great guy. Um, I will always remember Steve's smoke rings. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember Steve and Paula always wanted to play charades and Steve doing a great bacon imitation. <laughs> <laughs> and he was just he was always there. Yeah. <laughs> I had a dress on. He was bacon frying on a pan and he was <laughs> But yeah, Steve was a great guy, and uh, yeah, I had to just mention that. I also traveled with Steve. We spent a month traveling through Kenya. I don't think Steve did any teaching. <laughs> it was the summer, and I had been robbed, and I had no money. And Joe Perry, who we, I would also like to toast. Mm. brought me money because at that time, well, everything I had owned was stolen, all my money. And he knew I wanted to travel and he came and he had, I think it was $200, which was a fortune in those days. And he said, here, take this and travel. And Steve was going to Kenya, so I joined him and we had so much fun. We went on this really cheap budget safari called Best Tours and uh, <laughs> Chuck broke down so many times. And at the end, because of that, they gave us a dinner in Nairobi at the end. And we got there, and no one recognized each other because everyone had had a shower and girls had put on makeup. And I remember being in, going to a restaurant, and one of the girls walking in the bathroom and trying to wash her hair. 
and somebody came in, you can't do that here. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we, we had a great time and he was a, a fabulous man and I, I miss him too. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And to Guy Perry, to Joe Perry who loaned me the money and I just found out on the Facebook page that we lost him mm -hmm. many years ago. Uh, I think it was maybe 10 years ago. So yeah. to, to Joe Perry. Joe Perry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's one other person, Steve Higginson. I don't know how many of you remember Steve, but he came in my year. And we actually missed the plane together because we were in a bar in Brussels, and I came back to the table, and there was Steve's passport sitting on the table. And uh, I picked it up. And then I met someone who I had traveled with years earlier, and he said, I'm having a party, you want to come back? Oh, God. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, I and I was very tired, and I was walking by the bedroom, and I thought, I'll lie down for 10 minutes, and the next thing I know, it was 11.30 in the morning, and I was meant to be at, you know, we were leaving for the airport at, say, 10.30, and I called the hotel, and Greg Morley answered, and he said, Vicki, get back to the hotel and bring Steve's passport. <laughs> And so Steve, bless him. And then we were we were stuck in uh, in Amsterdam for two days with Greg Morley, who was fabulous also. And I said to him at one point, Greg, why don't you tell me off because I have screwed up very badly. And he said, Oh, I think you've suffered enough, and I think you're going to suffer more when you get there. <laughs> <laughs> so he walked us around the Amsterdam in the evening, Steve and I, through the red light district, and he said. All I can say is you two better be in your rooms in the morning. <laughs> 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 great, great. Oh,